It's Rob! Tony! And I'm Jeff. We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello gamers and welcome back to the end. I'm Rob, of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in-game name. And today we're going to be knocking out which adventure mode is best for you. Uh, again, depending on the player uh, and how much you play and uh, what you need, which adventure mode you, sh uh, you should buy is going to be different. So if you're uh, if just starting Hearthstone, obviously you're going to want different stuff than someone who's been playing Hearthstone a couple months. So just take this as like a general guideline. Don't be, oh, that's what he said and it's wrong and blah, blah, blah. No, this is just a guideline. You don't have to follow it. I'm just here to help for those of you who are a little bit overwhelmed at Hearthstone when you first start. I know it's uh, there's a lot to buy. There's different packs. There's different adventure modes. You have no idea what the fuck's going on. There's colors. There's fucking little Murloc guys in pictures and creepy guys with huge beards. So I understand. It's very overwhelming. So that's why I'm here. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to go through each adventure mode and um, I'm going to lay out which cards are kind of cards you want to aim for, uh, why they're good, and then from there go into which particular wings maybe be best for you. And again, just my opinion. Don't have to, you know, agree with me 100%. It's just a guideline. Um, so we're going to start off with Nax Ramis. Uh, this is my free-to-play account, and I'm on here just so I can see the rewards after on my main account. You actually, when you open up the chest, you can't see uh, what comes in each uh, wing anymore, so I figured it'd be easy. So I actually do own all of the expansions, so to be like, oh, this scrub doesn't even own it, and he's telling me what to buy. No, I this is my free-to-play account, and... Um, I already do own all the expansions. So, uh, for starters, we're going to head into the uh, Naxxramas wing, which we're in now. And the first wing uh, grants you the Haunted Creeper in the Egg. Uh, these two cards go very well in most aggressive type decks. Uh, you can pretty much play an aggressive type deck through almost all of the classes. Uh, Hunter and Warlock seem to be kind of the more prominent, and you'll see the, a lot of those on ladder. Um, but, oh, Hunt, I already said Hunter. It's Hunter, Warlock, a lot of Paladin is well in there. Um, but yeah, those are very inexpensive uh, decks you can build with these cards, and they are highly effective. So uh, when most players start the game, uh, they tend toward, they, they, tend to go towards the cheaper decks to build, which seem to be the more aggressive type decks. And they're a little bit easier to play because there's not as much thinking, there's not as much late game. Um, most of the time you just hit their face or make maybe an easy trade. Um, so the, the, this is a good wing uh, to start off if you're a new player, and these are definitely two good cards that will go into a lot of your decks. Um, the second uh, wing here, we see the Sledge Belcher and the Lothab. The Lothab, again, is a card found in a lot of aggressive decks due to the fact that it stops your enemy from casting spells the following turn, which in thus um, prevents them from being able to cast spells that uh, clears the board. So if you're setting up for a uh, lethal, or to, you know, win the following turn, playing Lothab the turn prior so your opponent cannot clear the board is an absolute great play to make. Uh, the Sledge Belcher goes to goes into a little bit slower decks, so as you progress through your Hearthstone career, you build your collection, you'll be able to play some of the later decks, and uh, Sledge Belcher is a great card. It's, I've also seen this card a lot in mid-range Hunter lately. Um, so even if you're not playing, you know, Control Warrior and things of the, that nature, Throwing this into maybe your beginning late game deck may not be a terrible idea. Okay, so heading into the... Uh, I believe this is what third wing yeah so we're at the third wing now uh there's really nothing in this wing to be honest that you're gonna see a lot i mean death lord is nice and it's played sometimes but as uh the beginner players and some of the intermediate players kind of tend to stay away from death lord because depending on when you play it it can be really impactful uh either for you uh negative or positively and or negatively depending on what they get out of it so it's kind of like uh not not really i would say a beginner card um heading down to the fifth or the fourth uh, we have the uh, Mad Scientist, which is, in my opinion, one of the most broken two drops in the game. I honestly have no idea why they released this card in this game this early in the first expansion. It's fucking broken. <laughs> um, so if you plan on playing a deck like uh, Face Hunter, Midrange Hunter, um, what's another deck? Uh, Tempo Mage. Uh, Mad Scientist is an, it's almost a must. It's a staple. It's amazing. So uh, definitely uh, want to make your way until the, I believe, fourth wing this is. Uh, the construct quarter. So yeah, so one, two, three, four. Um, so getting Naxxramas up to the fourth quarter is nice. It also get the zombie chat, which is found in you know uh, most priest decks because of uh, our, our particular card called Soul Priest, and that allows you to deal five damage instead of healing them for five, which is really really nice burst damage. And then the last wing comes with the Kelthazad, which is really not played much. The Echoing Ooze, which is not played much, isn't a bad card, but it's just not played much. And the State of Naxxramas, which is pretty much only found in uh, mid range Druid. And um, 
So if you don't plan on playing mid-range Druid, Token Druid, or maybe some hybrid shit with Kel Kel'Thuzad, this last wing, really, you don't need it. Um, so aim if you want to uh, get these good aggro cards, Lothab, Sludge Belcher, Mad Scientist for your Tempo Mage deck. Uh, getting up to the fourth wing in, in Naxxramas is ideal. Again, if you're a starting player, this is probably where you want to start off is in Naxxramas. Um... If, again, if you have any questions regarding um, any of these adventure modes, uh, just state now. Just leave a comment in the section below. I read them all, and I try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if Just be as specific as possible when you're asking your question. You don't have to make an elaborate response, a three-paragraph essay describing, you know, why, when, how, this, that. Just let me know, hey, um, this is what I'm. This is the decks I'm looking to build. What do you suggest? And if I didn't answer it in this video, then, of course, leave your comment. But for the most part, save your comments until the video is over because I address a lot of things. Um, I've actually had a few comments like, oh, what do you consider this? And I literally say it one minute into the video. It's like you didn't even watch the video and you're asking questions, <laughs> which is not, I mean, it's not annoying and it's not, I don't know, it's just kind of weird that you would add, like, you didn't watch the video, but you're asking a question that was addressed at one minute into the video. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we're going to the Black Rock Mountain. This is a really weird kind of uh, adventure mode because it, there's not a whole lot in it. There's very deck specific cards, uh, unlike Naxxramas, which has more like a variety of cards you can play in a whole bunch of different decks that are all really solid. Black Rock uh, Mountain. Um, is not like that. So off the bat, the first wing, incredible. You get Grim Patron, which changed the whole warrior deck type for a while until they nerfed the Warsong Commander. So Grim Patron isn't uh, found as much on ladder, but still is a good card if you plan on playing Grim Patron Warrior. Very specific kind of deck. Um, but the card that really makes this wing shine is Emperor Tharzan, and he is found in a lot of decks. Um, if you play ladder at all, I'm sure you've seen him by now, and if you haven't, you're going to see him. Um, he says, uh, I don't even really need to go over exactly what they say, but he's, at the end of your turn, reduce the cost of all cards in your hand by one. Uh, this doesn't may not seem that great. You're like, oh, it's only one at the end of the turn. But the second you play him, his effect goes off, and if they don't kill him, it just keeps stacking, and your cards become even more valuable, and you're uh, allowed to make combos that you'd normally not be able to make um, in one turn, well, such of which is, the first thing that comes to my head is, in a Control Warrior deck, which this guy has, of course, played, you can play Sylvanas and Brawl in the same turn. And um, normally the cost 11 mana, this isn't a combination you can play, but if e any one of those cards gets Empered, you can play Sylvanas, the Windrunner, and then Brawl, and then if your creature lives, that's fine because that's great. And if your creature doesn't live, that's fine because you're going to take your opponent's card. So it's no matter what, you're going to end up with a card at the end of your turn, which is insane value. Um, Besides that, there's really nothing too crazy. Imp Gang Boss is found in uh, Warlock Zoo in a Reno uh, Warlock. Um, so if you're looking to play a Warlock deck and you're very Warlock heavy, uh, getting the Imp Gang Boss is important. Besides that, a Black Wing Technician isn't even really needed in a lot of Dragon decks. I mean, she's okay, uh, but I've actually found ways to play around or play not play around her, but play without her and do just as good, if not better. Uh, uh, this guy's fucking trash and the druid of the flame is there's I don't even I didn't even play her in my beast druid deck if that tells you anything uh, Heading to this. There's nothing really in here. I tried to play the crack or the dragon consort It's just I couldn't couldn't get the deck to work really well core ranger never seen uh, Dragon egg goes into token druid a very specific kind of deck that um Not even token druid. It's called like egg roll druid and people say they hit legend with it. That's fantastic I don't think it's good. Every time I play it, I wreck it, so I wouldn't suggest this. And the Ren Blackhand's fucking garbage. Um, oh, yeah, we already clicked on them. So that's the third wing. The fourth wing comes with a little bit better cards. Revenge, in my opinion, it's a pretty good warrior card. Um, I'm actually running two of them in my control warrior right now, and it's going very, very well. But again, you don't need it. It's not like a mandatory staple as, like, Mad Scientist in, you know, Face Hunter or... Um, Tempo Mage. Mad Scientist is a card you need. Revenge is not a card you need. It's kind of a card you throw in there uh, and it does well for a certain amount of time and you probably take it out and switch it for some other stuff. The Flame Waker though again is a very deck specific card. It's found in Tempo Mage. So if you're looking to build a Tempo Mage deck you've got to put the Flame Waker in there. If not you don't really need them. Uh, the Hungering Dragon haven't no. <laughs> Fire Guard Destroyer. Uh, for you good, those who play Shaman, even if you play Shaman, he's probably not found in your deck. Uh, for the most part, when you play him on turn 4, he sets you back a little bit too far because the Overload 1 may not seem like a lot, but there's a lot of great 5-drop Shaman cards, and you uh, it, it all depends on your deck. But he's not bad, he's not good, so he's not a make or break. And then Chromacus is actually... I played him in my Dragon Priest for a while, he did very well. 
but again, it's not really impactful. So there's nothing in here that's absolutely staple in some decks, such as, you know, Grim Patron, Met Scientist, things like that. And again, this is just my opinion. Take it as you wish. And then the last wing comes with uh, the Black Wing Corruptor, which is pretty good in the dragon any type of any type of dragon deck so if you're looking to build a dragon deck you definitely are probably going to have to knock out the entirety of this adventure mode to get black wing corruptor he's kind of too good not to put in there again he's not an actual staple you don't have to have him but he's he's pretty far up there in like the capability or how good he is in the dragon decks and then neff he's also a great dragon so let's say you don't have like is is broad I wouldn't not say it's broad. If you don't, if your collection of cards isn't outstanding, like you don't have Usera, you don't have Extraza, you don't have any really huge legendary minions that are really good. Neff is actually a card that you get, of course, from completing the expansion. He's actually not that bad. Um, he adds two cards to your hand. They are random, but most of the time they're pretty good, and they definitely can change the uh, the game around in your favor. And he's an eight eight, so you can't really complain about the stats. If you can't get if they can't get rid of them the next turn, you're going to be able to deal some damage and or kill some creatures. So again, if you get if you're lacking on some of the legendary uh, late game legendary cards, getting Neff probably not the worst idea in the world. Okay, and then we're going to head into the League of Explorers, which is probably my favorite expansion so far, and it's just because one card in particular, and I'm sure you could guess him, he's Reno Jackson. We actually were able to hit Legend last season with the um, Reno Jackson Warlock deck, very fun deck, very effective, and um, I'm glad he comes in the first wing of the... Uh, League of Explorers because it allows you guys to, you know, first wing, you get a really, really solid card that you can build a lot of different decks out of. So it's awesome. Jeweled Scarab is also a very, very good good card that's found in Reno Jackson decks. So you kind of get two cards right here that are very, um, that work very well together. Uh, Summoning Stone, I'm working on making a Summoning Stone Priest right now. I can't promise anything. I have no idea when it's going to be done. I'm still tweaking it. Um, some decks take a lot longer to tweak than others. Uh, Summoning Stone Priest being one of those decks that's taking me quite a while to kind of get like i just don't want to make a deck guide on a deck that works sometimes like i want to produce a deck that you know has a good consistency wins most often if you play the deck how it's supposed to be played again if you just randomly you know build one of my decks you don't watch the video you don't know how to play it and you're playing it wrong and you lose and i'm sorry it's not my fault um but for the most part i try to get uh, the deck guides i put out as consistent and as uh um well built as possible i know that was a little off topic but i figured i'd say it because i was i don't know uh, and yeah both explorers have probably not played that much not make or break in any decks uh the second wing here is actually really really good as well so uh first two wings league of explorers good stuff uh, we got tunnel trog which is pretty much you can play him in any shaman deck and he'll do just fine and even if you don't overload him your opponent's gonna be like oh shit a tunnel trog because everybody's playing aggro shaman right now and tunnel trog if you played aggro shaman you know how fucking big he can get it's like the mana worm of the shamans um so definitely gonna be a card that your opponent's going to raise a frostbolt on a ray or a wrath um just one of those cards that your opponent is going to want to kill asap even if you don't have the combination to make him work uh keeper of ulderman in my opinion is fucking broken she's so good um She's, if you're playing Paladin, this is pretty much a card I would aim to have. She's just, I would say she's better than the peace, uh, the Eldor, the Peacekeeper, because she works offensively and defensively. You can play her in different situations. Her stats are 3, 4 for 4, so she does cost one more, but she can be used offensively, which is fantastic, and defensively to get you, you know, your 1-1 one, one turned into a 3-3, three, three, and you just so happen to be able to make a 1-1 one, one every turn, so very nice. And then Braun here, this guy's a beast. He's found in um, a lot of different decks. You can actually, like, most decks have a good number of battle cries, which makes him pretty effective. His stats are, instead of uh, being Baron, Baron was, I believe, a 1 attack, 7 HP, 4 drop, which makes it pretty much useless. You have to base how good it is off its effect. But Bran, uh, he played him a turn earlier, so 3 drop, really not that expensive. 4 HP, pretty good. Has more than your uh, piloted shredder, and it has 2 attacks, so it's actually not as... I mean, it's pretty useful. Um, he stands on his he stands his ground, and it can be comboed with a lot of stuff. And he's found in a lot of decks, so you actually get a pretty good set of cards out of this wing. And I haven't covered Raptor because Raptor Rogue is a very specific kind of deck. Raptor only goes in that, and um, I haven't really seen it that much. And I haven't really seen a good Raptor Rogue, so I can't speak highly of this. But I know it's a card that people do play. 
but it's not really a card I would recommend getting this wing just to get that, just to build Raptor Lo Rogue, unless you're really wanting to build it, then of course buy this wing and get that card. Um, from there, we have the third wing, which comes for, uh, if you want to build your Murloc Paladin, this is good. You've got a Fern Sir Finley Murgleton, which is found in a lot of different decks right now, surprisingly. Uh, people don't like their passives. <laughs> and then anything can happen. So obviously, if you're looking to build the Paladin uh, the Paladin Murloc, which I mentioned, anything can happen is going to be a card you definitely need. And these other two are not that, I mean, every, every fin is awesome. I've seen a couple shamans play this. Haven't really, it hasn't made or break any of the games. And then, then the Sea Witch again, not that, not that great. Um, the last one here, I haven't seen anyone play Rafam. I'm actually building a deck with him in it now, so I'll let you know later on how good he is. Uh, Elise is a card that a lot of control decks are playing. So again, if you're newer to Hearthstone, this wing is probably, or this, yeah, this last wing is probably not for you. You don't really need it because um, you're not really building control warrior, control priest. Those are very expensive decks depending on what you put in them, and they do take a little bit of skill to play. The Desert Camel is a. Uh, a card specific hunters sometimes play. They'll combo him with another two drop. No, he's actually a one drop, what, two four? And uh, there's no point to get into it because it's not prominent. There's no point, to be honest. I've, I've seen it played. It's good sometimes, but most of the time it's just, it's a dead card. And then uh, the museum guy, he's actually really, really good in Priest, to my surprise. I played him in my Entomb Priest deck. He does very well. Again, kind of a card that you only play in Entomb Priest. Uh, some play him, and I actually, I believe I played him in my Dragon Priest as well. But there's other cards that you can put in, put in replace of him that you don't need to, you know, unlock an entire wing to get. So again, not really a core card that you're looking to build and doesn't go into a lot of decks as it's not really a neutral. It just goes into specific Priest decks. So if I had to break this down into what to buy um, your intermediate player you want to build a variety of different decks and want to get the best bang from your buck i would say unlock for the first four wings of naxxramas so you can get the zombie chow and the mad scientist from there unlock the first wing in the black rock um, that's pretty much all you need so you can get emperor tharzan and grim patron again if you're looking to build like a tempo mage unlock flame waker but if you're not looking to build any particular specific deck that needs specific cards to do well this is the general out outline I would take until you can, you know, unlock the rest. So we've got four wings of Naxxramas, the first in Blackrock, and I believe two in the League of Explorers. So you can unlock the Reno, and you can unlock the uh, Bran, the Keeper, and the Tunnel Trog, and then beyond that is up to you, but that's just my recommendation. So we've got four, one, two. Um, so in total, you're unlocking seven wings at 700 gold, I believe they cost each. So 4,900 gold. It does sound like a lot if you don't plan on spending money, but I will do it eventually with this free-to-play account. So it just takes time. Right, right now, we've been doing pretty much arena constantly, and we're at 1,160, and we honestly haven't even played this account that much. Um, so it's not impossible if you're doing it, you know, one, one two weeks at a time. You could probably unlock one. Uh, one to two wings every one to two weeks, which ideally is pretty good, um, depending on, of course, how much you play. And with that comes to the end of the video. Hopefully this covered a lot of your questions. And uh, if you're a newer player, kind of covered what you should do and what you should aim for. Uh, PAX is another thing that seems to be really kind of uh, a huge issue with new players. So we actually have a video. I made a video on that. Um, so if you want, you can check that out in the annotation. Those are for you. And then if you have any ideas on future videos I should do to kind of help out the newer players, or if you are a new player and I haven't just, you know, identified a problem that you're having and you would like a video on it, I'm more than happy to kind of accommodate you in that way. So with all of this said, of course, enjoy having you here at the end. I'm Warshak and happy whatever the hell day it is.